I didn't paint my nails. I should, oh, I'll just be painting them on camera again. I should count and keep track of how many times I like paint my nails on camera because I because you can't see it unless you. I go back and look at my face because I know you're doing it, and I'm like, and like <laughs> I know what you're doing, Jenny. Jenny. I know what you're doing. Time-saving tips on this week's episode with your hosts, Andrea Pettingill at Shine with Drea and Jenny Hansen at Jenny A. Hansen. Hello, you are watching this week's episode of Beauty's Talking Business with your hosts, Jenny A. Hansen and Andrea Pettingill. And we are here this week. We are going to give you some of our top time saver techniques and tricks when it comes to saving time in the salon. So time is way important to me and efficiency is so important. And, and with anybody, don't you think? Time is money. Time is money. Any, everybody in the salon knows that, you know, you really want to make sure you are on top of your game. Yes, absolutely. So we thought that this would be a really good episode for all of you guys because over the years, in our 20 plus years of combined experience together, we have learned a few tips and tricks that really help us that are effective and efficient when it comes to clients in the salon. So Dre, do you want to start with the first tip or do you want me to start with mine? Okay. I can start with the one that I um, wanted to talk about first. Okay. Uh, so my first one is when... Clients come into the salon, especially, I think, can we agree we kind of like waste the most time on, well, not waste, it's fairly important for the consultation um, when we're doing that, but for a new client, we kind of spend the most time with them. Mm -hmm. um, but something that um, I was realizing when I look back at time and making sure that I'm on time, something that I do with my clients is um, even when they're new clients, as soon as I come in and sit down, like I, I ask them what's the basic um, thing that we're doing. So whether it's a manicure, uh, acrylic set or gel set, like I know basically what we're doing and I start working on them while we have the consultation because the prep work can be done without those major decisions being made yet. Mm -hmm. um, instead of sitting there and pulling colors for them and like, you know, just not holding their hand and working on their nails and getting them all the way prepped. So during that time, you can be making those color choices. And so my tip is always be working. Yes. Yeah. That's huge. I love that. I'm actually going to start using that one because I feel like I'm like always trying to give my undivided attention. And so I'll get lost in that and lose track of time. So I'm like the complete opposite. It's easy for that to happen. It's so easy for that to happen. And so one of my big tips though is actually to pull colors for them, but a little bit differently. So I'll be having a conversation with them. We'll be in our consultation, talking, you know, deciding what we're doing. Maybe I'll be prepping, maybe not. I don't know. I'm going to start doing that. But I'll have that conversation of, you know, what do you have in mind today? I know our service and also okay, what colors, you know, if I know they want a color, what color are you feeling more pulled to? Do you like brights, reds, pinks, neutrals, or darks? And then it gives them some categories to think of. And then they're like, well, I usually like, like neutral, really neutral colors. And so I start to get a sense of what color they want. And then when it comes time for that color application, or sometimes if I feel I'm getting kind of antsy, like they need to have their color picked out early. Yeah then I'll get up and I will pull like three colors and see, oh, do you like, you know, this, this, let's say they said that they love reds. Oh, this red's a little more purple. This one's more blue based. This one's a little more orange based. Let, you know, comparing it to their skin tone, letting them see what looks good. And if they like it, then they're like, oh, yep, that's the one. That's it. I love it. And we move on versus handing them like a stack of swatches to choose from or yeah. come look at all my product because then they can get lost. Some of them can get lost in that for like 10 minutes. Yeah. That's what, that's what I was going to say. It was like, it's so overwhelming for some people and you kind of get to know the clients that can't make decisions and yeah. which ones get totally overwhelmed with all your choices. I mean, look at this. I have like tons of colors. Yes. I have many, many choices. My clients always tell me that they're like, wow, like I've never seen anyone with that this many like choices before. I'm like, yeah. So you got to have to narrow, narrow it down for them. But so that's why I love that. I've, it made me think if I've seen people before where they'll do, they'll make it really easy for them to grab um, 
their basket of reds or their, their basket of like certain um, mm -hmm. colors or warm colors or have the seasonal colors already placed out in front of your clients so that right. they know that these are the ones that everyone's wanting right now so that it's really easy for you to keep prepping them and maybe you just have to stop open a drawer pull out that that um popular basket and then get back to prep because um with within your arm's reach you can make things really easy like mm -hmm. i started doing um getting all of my <laughs> stuff on my rings you're so yes i don't have to um fist their category pull all the colors down right mm -hmm. Another thing that I have is my um, jammer boxes. And so I just set these on the desk in front of the client and they can look through it and I can prep. And you can so prep. Making it easy for, for yourself to grab and give instead of like stopping your work is like really huge to me. <laughs> making that decision. Yes, and like that would be another really good one too. Like if I had swatches for all of my colors, I probably would do something similar in the sense of, oh, you're more pulled towards neutrals. Well, here are all my neutrals. And mm -hmm. so then it's like they have just that category to make a decision from and versus yeah. everything that you have, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of my tips. What's one of, do you have another tip? Um, so I think we were going to talk about, um, the way that you are doing the service, because this is something that I learned from, um, a need for speed class that I took a long time ago. I can't remember when, but there's so many times when we're just being perfectionists and we could be more efficient with like an acrylic pink and white, for example, yeah. um, we could, we kind of go through with filing. We could be all over the place instead of being really efficient and being like, do all the upper arch. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's done. Do all the free edge part when you're filing it down. That's done. Go around the cuticle area, bring that down to match that's done. Do you know what I mean? So you have all these systems that you do in place in that order so that you have it just like second nature instead of jumping around and then you go back to that nail and you shorten it again. Right. Absolutely. So yeah, because then you're not, it becomes so automatic. Like you're saying, you don't even have to think about it. Oh, because yeah. It just goes. And, and this is something that as a new nail technician, especially for me starting out as I would find that I would do some of the same things multiple times. So, um, maybe I would go through with like swiping or dehydrating the nail plate and then, like go to do something else and then end up dehydrating it again and then not even realize it or there or sometimes I would catch myself when I was first starting my business was um filing the regrowth like a length off and then prepping the nail and then filling it and then as I'm after the fill, of course, you're going in with your finished filing. Then I'm back there filing to the finished filing and getting the length in a second time, which is really, which is just a waste of time. So pay attention to those little things that you might be doing more than once that aren't necessarily needed. Yeah. And that'll be a huge time saver. One thing I love when I learned the way that um, to do glitter toes with manicure, mm -hmm. um, and you can't do this with shellac, I don't know, um, because one thing that I like to do is I'll paint the base color and I'll press in the glitter and then I'll top coat it. And mm -hmm. then after they're all done and wiped and everything, then I'll file the free edge. So I haven't touched the free edge at all like their nails are long. Sometimes if they're way too long, their toenails, I'll clip their toenails, mm -hmm. just clip them really fast and just leave it like raw like that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just, and I can get, you know, glitter toes done in like 15 minutes. So I'm like, that really like helped me not to like worry about filing it. And then when it's done worrying about filing it again, because the glitter will be pokey and you want to file right. it. So the pokies aren't like yeah. yeah, no, you couldn't do that with shellac because it would lift up. So it that that's seal. really cool. If you're using like a gel for glitter, it's a hard gel, more, more of a hard gel thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that really helped me to get my glitter toes just like totally 
just Fast. bust it out. <laughs> bust it out. Yes. And then do you have another tip or was that pretty much all of our main ones? So another oh. one that we talked about. Yeah. Oh, wait. I just remembered one more. Yeah. That's probably the one I was going to say. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, while I'm on the phone booking a, an appointment with someone, or if you have a system online that books appointments, you can have a little note section. And I like to ask, is this for a special occasion? Because if it is, you know, a wedding or a shower or something coming up, then you know that yes, it is for an occasion. And it, if it is for an occasion, if there's like a certain picture or an idea of uh, nail art that they want, whether occasion or not, but if you know what you're getting into before you start this service, that can save on a lot of time. And if you know they want nail art, you can ask them to send in a picture or if they're going to a wedding, you can ask them to bring in like their dress or an accessory that they really like. And then that can save time in that sense too, because you are, they already know what they want. They've brought you a photo. And so you know exactly what you're doing or they've brought in, you know, a piece, their dress. And so you know exactly what color you're trying to match. And that saves a ton of time to trying to versus trying to explain what it is they want. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So good. <laughs> that was, I was thinking as you were saying that, that, um, when I was taking a need for speed class, having like doing the nails in front of um, Amanda Dodge was the one helping me. She was able to see, Oh, look at that. You're doing it like that. Maybe do it like this. And I was like, Whoa, that blows my mind. <laughs> and, and so I was thinking like, if any of you watching this, maybe you're a new nail tech, new to your process. I know my apprentice is learning pedicures and I keep having to remind her the order I do it and then she'll like change the order I'll be like did you do that foot okay do the other foot like and it's it's repetition it's getting it down um so I just want to invite any of you to um comment and send us your um step-by-steps of what you're doing because you, there might be a step that isn't necessary or you're repeating it and maybe even writing it out um to send it into us might like trigger something and you'd be like oh I don't have to do that and it might help you to change your system or something yeah. you know we're here to help out we want to know what you guys are struggling with so let us know a hundred percent which is so fantastic too and then if you're having any kind of troubleshooting problems you can usually find out why or where those are coming from within those steps but yeah. that's it for today's episode thank you so so much for watching again this is beauty's talking business with jenny a hansen and Andrea Pettingill. And you can find us at beautystalkingbusiness.com or over on the website. There's more information and also where we are all over social media as well. And stay tuned for next week's episode. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. We hope you loved this episode of Time Saving Tips with your host Andrea Pettingill at Shine with Drea and Jenny Hansen at Jenny A. Hansen. Please head over to our Facebook group and give us a like and subscribe if you have not yet already. Thanks for watching. Till next week. Bye.